So let's talk about what's new. All new, the next generation. Introducing M1 Ultra. This is Mac Studio and Studio Display. An all new MacBook Air, completely redesigned. Introducing M2. So Apple just released the new Mac Studio and Studio Display a few weeks ago. And with a bunch of new products and tools coming out every year, I think it's easy to feel like you need to keep up and that you obviously can't. And I think it can give people who are just starting out the wrong impression that you're not going to be able to start learning software development or filmmaking or YouTube because you don't have the right tools. So let's talk about it. So Apple just announced a beast of a computer, a chip twice as powerful as the M1 Max, a gorgeous new 5K display, and it's easy to look at that and think, I need one of those. But do you really? I think all of us believe to a degree that a new tool is going to make us better at what we do, and most of the time that's not true. If you take a long time to come up with and code a solution to a problem or to get a piece of UI just right, or if maybe your code is buggy and hard to maintain and your app crashes, the new Mac Studio's faster build times are not going to solve those problems. Same thing if you don't quite know how to edit videos and have a hard time doing basic things, the new Mac Studio will just allow you to be a bad editor faster. And I think that's even worse for people who are just starting out and trying to figure out what kind of tools they need to get started. For example, if you want to do native iOS development, you will need a Mac. There is no getting around that. Like a cheaper PC is not going to help you with that. You can start learning on an iPad, which is cheaper, but... If you want to work in iOS development, you will need a Mac. But which one? Well, here's the thing. Until the second half of last year, I was using a 2015 MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM to work on an international project full time with almost no issues. The reason why I upgraded was because that computer only had 256 gigs of SSD and I was constantly running out of space. It made more sense to me to sell it get the money and invest on a new M1 machine than to upgrade the SSD on a computer that has its days numbered because of the M1 transition. But if you're just starting out, a 2015 MacBook Pro is more than good enough for you to learn and do your first jobs on and then save some money for an upgrade. And by the way, the computer that I got to substitute that 2015 MacBook Pro was nothing fancy. It's an M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD, and it has been absolutely great. I do have here with me a M1 Pro 16-inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM, but that's a company-issued computer that I need to use for my current job, but they sent it to me. I didn't pay for that, and in day-to-day -day use, I feel very little difference between using it and using my simpler M1 Mac Mini. Same goes with YouTube and cameras. There's always a new one coming out and it can get very confusing trying to figure out if you need to get one and if you do, which one. I'd say it's even more complicated with cameras because a new Mac Studio is not gonna change how the app looks or how fast it runs on your user's phones, but a new camera might improve the image quality of the final video that you put out. So there's an even bigger incentive to try to chase the hottest new thing that's out since you can literally see the improvement in the image quality. But then again, this is a small channel. I still feel like a total beginner. I have a lot of trouble trying to make videos consistently and upload them on a regular schedule. So a new camera is not gonna help with that. I've been using a Canon SL2 for the past two years with just the kit lens. It's nothing fancy, it's a 1080p camera, but it's good enough. And if you're just starting out, you can just use your phone. The first few videos I published here were all shot on an iPhone 7, and I still use my current iPhone, which is a 12, for b-roll and things like that, like showing you the camera like I'm doing right now. But what about when you do decide to upgrade? Shouldn't you save money and 
go for the highest and newest thing? I don't believe so. I've seen a lot of tests and reviews of the Mac Studio where the highest end $8,000 M1 Ultra version performed just a bit faster than the baseline M1 Max version that costs $6,000 less. And the same goes for cameras, like why do you need 8K RAW 14-bit recording if all you're doing is YouTube videos like this one and people are watching it on their phones, which is their smallest screens? I think it's important that we learn to choose good enough, that we learn to choose tools based on our actual needs and not just try to chase the highest end. Apple computers are no longer user upgradable, so if you can't afford to take 32 gigs of RAM instead of 16 or bump up the SSD a little because you work with video and you know that the baseline might be fine for now, but six months from now it's not gonna be enough, and you know, try to future-proof your purchase a little bit like that, that's fine. But spending thousands more on 64, 128 gigs of RAM, 8 terabytes of SSD, just to chase the newly released highest end thing every year, and then end up not using it, or worse, not starting something because you think you need more than you actually do, that's not fine. But we need to remember what's important in the end, which is that good tools are important, but they are there to serve a purpose. To help you build and not to be the main purpose themselves. So if you're feeling some FOMO with any of the latest releases or if you're putting off starting something because you're too focused on which tools to get, I hope this video is helpful to you and me to get out of that funk and remind us to make the most of what we already have. So let me know in the comments what do you think about all this, what are you using for iOS development, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel a lot. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.